All right, I'm going to take you through the house. <clears throat> we're going to go through some of the automation systems, and we're going to see if we can find some Linux. Now, before we even get into the house, I want to show you the first bit of Linux you're going to see when you get to my house, and that is the Linux that is the boat. Come here, come on. Come, here. come, here, come on, come on. Come on. Dev Hall. It's the first Linux device you're going to see when you get to the house. That's even the driveway. Now, when you walk up, actually, if you look over here, you can see we've got a camera here that points out driveway. Um, here we've got a camera that uh, lets me know if there's anyone that's coming in uh, to the door, standing at the door. I'm going to take my key fob, and here is the Carry Systems RFID reader. I'm going to go ahead and present my credentials, and that's going to separate this electromagnetic lock from this electromagnetic plate. So a couple things you'll notice now when you walk into the house, a couple things have happened. Um, the uh, When I swipe my key, it actually disarmed this uh, security panel. And so now this motion detector that would ordinarily detect us, as, uh, as you see, is not alarming uh, because of our entrance. And we've got a security camera that's watching the entryway and, and the hallways. And if we come down here, you'll notice that up here, um, we've got a motion detector up here, and that's obviously controlling the downstairs lights. Now, if we count the boat as Linux device number one, let's count with me now. We've got my main computer, that's Linux device number two. We've got my IRC client, that's a dedicated computer that's just existing in the chat room, that's Linux computer number three. We've got the Bumble machine, which is Linux computer number four. And then on a KVM, I can actually switch between all these nooks down here. And so I have a tower of nooks. Um, and so it's we have six or seven. Um, I've got, I used to have all these towers here, and I've actually replaced them with nooks because it's a little bit more uh, cost effective. What do we have? We're at six. Um, this is uh, the production machine, and that's where I'm doing all of my uh, Linux based video production. Now we're at seven. And then this is a computer that I'm using for doing like distro tests and, and, and stuff like that. Number eight. Um, or if I'm testing new software. Also, <clears throat> I call that my tasking computer, basically. It's a computer that's just in the corner, has a really crappy keyboard, really crappy mouse, really crappy display, and I just use it for, like, tasks. I need to recover some data off a hard drive, and it's going to take 16 hours to copy data off of it. I don't want to do that on my main machine, so I'm going to use that, my number eighth machine, um, to, to, to copy data off of. I also have a little work laptop here, and that's mostly if I'm if I'm working on a task and I don't have my main laptop and I want to take some work with me up to a different part of the house or something like that, I'll do it on computer number nine. Okay, come on, we got more computers. More Linux. More Linux. I call this the control room. My wife sometimes mistakenly calls it the laundry room. Now, <clears throat> inside of this first panel, we have the automation controller, and that's what's being tied into the network. I assume it's running some sort of embedded Linux, but I'm not exactly sure, so we won't count it. That's what's receiving all of the RF signals from uh, all of the different peripherals in the house, and it's also what's sending uh, the commands out. Now, if we go over here, this is a Linux server that is uh, running, serving up all of my files. This is a LAN switch that is separating out the internet. This is a Linux server that is running all of my virtual machines. So I have CentOS running as a host, and then I have a bunch of different virtual machines that's connected to this WAN switch. So they're actually live on the internet. It's like having my own DigitalOcean uh, data center right in my house, just at a little bit slower than the speed. And then I have the power distribution unit, or PDU. Going from this network rack up here at the very top, we have the punch plate. That's where all the network wires from all the house come in. There's an organization panel. Right below that is my switch. Right below that is my router. Below that, you'll see that I have the guest gate. That's what's separating out my network from just the internet for people that want to connect to my openwireless.org access point. And obviously the kit mode, and then flight radar. Flight radar is this really neat box that I'm sure is running Linux. And basically what it does is it looks out and tracks all aircraft that are outside of my house or that are flying around the area and then displays that onto my computer and then uploads the information actually onto the internet. Um, uh, for flight radar, and so they, they can actually track all of that stuff. <clears throat> the antenna's outside of my house. It's actually kind of a neat system. Now, over here, you might have to come over here to see this, but uh, this is the control panel for the generator, so I can switch these switches on or off, and I can bring us from shore power or down to uh, back up to the generator. 
Above it, sitting out here, is my Jupiter Broadcasting Roku. Now, that Roku is feeding a video signal into our connection box. And our connection box, it's going into the RF modulator, as well as it feeds from my security camera. So that's modulating over two different cable channels. So if I turn to channel 88, I'm getting Jupiter Broadcasting 89. I can see all the security cameras in my house. It's a really neat way to be able to access that content from anywhere in the house while only having uh, two devices. Now, from that feed, it's going out <clears throat> to the RF amplifier. From the RF amplifier, it's then going out to the house splitter, and then from there, all over to the rest of our house. As here, you can see this is for the SIP system, all the endpoint connections where the phone system ties in. And then here is the home whole house audio. Now, you'll notice this is labeled security feed at home audio and RF amplifier, RF splitter, that kind of thing. And that is going to allow me to, if I ever want to sell the house, or actually, should I say, as we're selling the house, um, the new owners will be able to see all of that stuff right off the bat. Also up here at the top, you can also see that I have, uh, that's the old phone system. Coming around over here, uh, this is the home theater. Now I've actually entered the theater mode and we need, there's a remote, there's an RF remote. All right, so this is our home theater. If you come out in here, I have the URC RF remote control, so when I hit start, what's happened is the projector has turned on, it's fired up the Western Digital CB Live, and it's fired up the receiver, um, so we're actually ready to watch a movie, and all I did was hit a single button. Now, what's really cool is when I hit play, you're going to notice a couple things that are going to happen. The Western Digital is actually going to hit play, but the lights are going to dim, um, and then the movie's going to start playing, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's also going to turn the volume all the way up to what we call theater mode. Now when I hit pause, it's going to pause and bring the lights back up. And then if I hit leave, it's going to shut the projector off, which actually takes a double click of the power button, shut the receiver off, shut the Western Digital uh, TV up, and then bring the lights up to exit mode so that we can actually get out of the theater. Then I can hit gone, and the lights will actually turn all the way off. That's the theater. Let's go take a look at the upstairs. All right, so we go ahead and come upstairs. You'll notice the motion detectors have turned us into um, relaxed mode, or 25% on the lights. Now, you'll notice the kitchen table light is completely off, and the cans are both on at 25%. This is my scene selector. If I start up at the very top, I have the kitchen seat. Now, if you take a look at the actual room, when I press kitchen, you'll notice that the focus turns to the kitchen. The table is relatively dead, and the living room is relatively dead, because I am working in the kitchen, I'm cleaning. Now, if I go to dining mode, you'll notice that the focus will change from the kitchen over to the dining table. And uh, the living room stays a little bit low. I can still sit in the living room and have a conversation if I wanted to. And if I had to do a couple little finishing up things in the kitchen, that would work too. But primarily, we're focusing here on the dining room. And finally, if I go to entertain, we have changed the focus away from this entire area of the house. And we're focusing strictly on the living area. And then, of course, relax, which is the default. Uh, setting, which is bring everything back down to 25%. Notice because the table lights were on when we started, it's going to bring those down to 24 or 25% as well. Additionally, these two lights that were on when we came up the staircase have now dipped to 25%. Now, the motion detectors might seem a little over the top, but let me show you how that can be really kind of cool and useful. We're going to go into the bathroom where there hasn't been a lot of motion, and you'll notice just by opening up the door, the lights have come on, okay? And so if I'm coming into the bathroom, it's as if uh, the lights have been on the entire time, even though after no motion, after 10 minutes, all the lights are actually going to turn off. Now, I have one of these controllers right next to my bed, and so at night, I'm actually able to shut all the lights off in the entire house with a single button, and in the morning, I'm able to turn on the equipment that I use, like the heat lamp and the coffee pot and stuff like that, as well as the lights to their appropriate levels, again, with a single click. By the way, since we're up here, you'll notice that... Here is yet another machine running Linux. This is my machine that runs Gourmet, my recipe manager. Now, we've talked about this before, but essentially this is managing all the recipes that I cook in the kitchen, um, and that's being run on and on to 14.04 machine. Um, how many machines are we up to now? Are we up to like 9 or 10? <clears throat> to top it off, of course, we have my refrigerator, which is, of course, running Linux and uh, has Google Calendar and, of course, my Twitter feed and stuff like that. That is very much clearly running Linux. Another really cool thing, Chris and I kind of disagree on this, I know, but my all my TVs in the house 
have Western Digital TV Lives attached at the back of them. So when I turn on the TV, the same system I was using in the theater to get my movies, I have that ability to get to that anywhere in the house. Now, in the bedrooms and in the theater, those are both wired uh, connections, and that's going to give me a lot better stability. But in places like the living room where the TV is up high like this, that's a little difficult. And so it's actually wireless. And um, I'm actually able to control the Western Digital TV Live and play all of my videos right in the living room. I've actually opted to buy these uh, remotes from URC. And uh, so every TV and every Western Digital combo in my house is using a single style of remote control. And that's really neat because it means wherever I am, the button layout is exactly the same, regardless if I'm in the bedroom or if I'm in the living room or if I'm in my son's room or if I'm downstairs working out or if I'm downstairs in my shop or if I'm in the theater. The button layout is, is, is identical on most of them. The theater has a couple extra buttons because it has to do a couple extra things. Um, lastly, uh, throughout the house, we have access points that are mounted, that the wires are run inside the walls and then they're powered over ethernet. And uh, of course, those are going to allow me to get um, to the various wireless networks that are in the house uh, from anywhere. I have a really nice, strong wireless signal. Um, last thing that has any, it's, not, it's a home automation thing, but really has no um, relationship to computers or Linux or anything like that is the uh, stereo system. And that is basically a volume switch on the, on the wall here where I can control that receiver that you saw downstairs. And I'm actually able to talk via Bluetooth with my phone, which I'm recording on right now, otherwise I would demo it to you. Um, I can send music or audio from a video I'm playing or something like that down to that receiver and then adjust per room the individual volume levels. So that's kind of a look at how we've done home automation. I'm sure I'm going to change a bunch of things. Um, as, I get as I get feedback from the community, if you go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com, click on the contact link and let me know uh, with the Linux Action Show from the drop-down menu. Let me know if you find open source solutions or things that you think I could automate in Linux. I would love to try them as we make this change and move into our new house. This is kind of how I've done it, but it was seven, eight years ago that I did this. And so I know that a lot of new technology and a lot of things have changed. And I'm really hoping I can implement those changes as we move forward.